Welcome to Leah's Reading Corner. Hello guys, my name is Leah and welcome back to part two of Sideway Stories from Wayside School. Here it is. So the last video I made, we were reading, we started off at Myron, okay? So we're going to start by here and I hope you enjoy. If you have the book, you can read along as long as you like. I don't even care. Do whatever you want. Chapter 8, Myron. Myron had big ears. He was elect. He was elect class president. The children in Mrs. Jules' class expected him to be a good president. Other presidents are good speakers. Myron was even better. He was a good listener. But he had a problem. He didn't know what a class president was supposed to do. So he asked. So he asked. What am I supposed to do? It's a difficult job said Mrs. Jules. But you can do it. You must turn on you must turn the lights on every morning and turn them off at the end of the day. What? asked my mom. As a class president you must listen. As a class president you must listen. You must learn to listen, said Mrs. Jules. I'll repeat myself only one more time. You must turn the lights on every morning. Every morning. I heard you the first time, said Myron. It do just doesn't sound like much a of a job. I think it certainly is, said Mrs. Jules. Without light, I can't teach. And the children can't learn. Only you can give us that light. I think it is a very important job. I guess so, said Myron. He wasn't convinced here. Let me show you. Let me show you how to work a light switch, said Mrs. Jules. I already know how, said Myron. I've been turning lights on and off all my life. Very good, said Mrs. Jules. I'll make a fine president. You'll make a fine president. My mom wanted to be the best president ever, but it was such an easy job, he thought, that anybody could do. When school let, let, when school let out that day, my mom stared behind. He turned out the lights by flicking the switch down. Excellent, said Excellent, said Mrs. Jules. On his way home, Myron had a horrible noise. Heard a horrible noise. First, there was a loud screeching sound, then a sharp squeal, a roaring engine, and then the and then the very faint sound of a girl crying. Myron ran to see what had happened. Daniel Daniel was was bent over in the middle of the road. What's the matter? What's the matter? asked Myron. My doggy Pugsy was hit by a car. Dana cried. That's wh that's why you always have to have a grown up way if you look both both ways and also hold your hand hold your parents' hand in the street or else you'll get run over. Dana cried. Who did it? asked Myron. I don't know. Dana sobbed. They, they sped away. Well, that's not important, said Myron. We've got to try to save Pugsy. Pugsy lay on constantly in the street. Myron carefully picked her up. She he carried her two miles to the vet. Dana cried at his side. 
Don't worry, Dana. Dana, Simaron. Out. She will be all right. But he, but he wasn't really so sure. He gave Pugsy to the vet. Walked Dana home. Then walked home himself. Dana was so upset that she forgot to thank him. Myron didn't mind. He thought that was. He thought that was what being class president was all about. Next morning, before he went to school, Myron went to Dana's house. Pugsy was there. He seemed all right. Dana petted her. Pugsy licked her face. See, Myron, she's all right," said Dana. The vet said she, the vet said that she brought her in just in time. Hi, Pup. Hi, Pugsy," said Myron. He petted her. Pugsy bit his hand. I guess she doesn't know you," said Dana. She was unconsciously, uncons, 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 I don't know. Help you. This maybe you should tell your parents for this word. Yesterday, when you saved her life, Dana's mother put some medicine and a bandaid on Myron's hand. Then she drove the children to school. They were late. They ran up the stairs to Mrs. Jules' class. The room was completely dark. It's about time you got here, Myron," said Mrs. Jules. "We have no lights." Why didn't some somebody else just turn them on? Asked Myron. Cause you're class president," said Mrs. Jules. Show, show Stefan how to work the lights. From now on, he will be class president. Myron showed Stefan how to turn on the lights. He flicked the switch up. At the end of the day, Myron showed Stefan how to turn the lights off. He flicked the lights down. Switch down. After a week, Stefan finally caught on. He made a good. He made a good present. The light were on every morning. Myron, who was president for only a day, was the best president in the history of Wayside School. It was just that nobody knew it. Chapter Nine, Mauricia. Mauricia liked the, liked ice cream. She was sweet and pretty, and could beat up any boy in Miss Yu's class. Everybody liked Mauricia except Cassidy, but then she didn't like anybody. Mauricia only liked ice cream. Every day, Mauricia brought an ice cream cone to school, and kept it in her desk until lunchtime. That is disgusting. Don't ever do that again. Cause it will melt, and it's sticky. At first, she brought chocolate ice cream every day, but she soon tired. But she soon tired of chocolate ice cream, so she started bringing vanilla ice cream. But she got tired of vanilla too. Then she got tired of strawberry fudge ripple. Butter pecan, butter pecan, butter pecan, pizza touch, and burger, burger jam, cherry, in that order, and then a terrible thing happened. Marisa got tired of ice cream. But that, by that time, her her Marisa. By that time, her desk was a mess, and everything in it was sticky. Told you, kids, don't ever do that. Everybody liked Marisa, Mar- but Marisa didn't like anything. Mrs. Jules hated to see Marisa unhappy. I don't understand it," said Mrs. Jules. "Cry, cry, Marisa." I don't understand it, Mrs. Jules," cried Marisa. "They just aren't any good flavors anymore." So, so Mrs. Jules worked all night. The next day, she brought in a new flavor. 
of ice cream from Mauricio. It was Mauricio flavored ice cream. Everybody will like it, thought Miss Mrs. Jules, because everybody likes Mauricio. Because because everybody likes Mauricio. Here you are, Mauricio, said Mrs. Jules. Mauricio flavored ice cream. Should, all right, sure. Everybody gathered around as Mauricia tasted it. They hoped she liked it. Mauricia take, took a lick. Well, said Mrs. Schultz. Mauricia took another lick. Well, asked the class, this ice cream has no taste. So Mrs. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so, so sorry. Didn't taste... This ice cream has no taste, said Mauricia. It doesn't taste bad, but it doesn't taste good. It doesn't taste like anything at all. Mrs. Juice was heartbroken. Here, let me try it, said Todd. He tasted it. You're crazy, Mauricia, he said. This is the best tasting ice cream I've ever eaten. Try some, Dee Dee. Um... Um, um, it's delicious, said Dee Dee. It's so sweet and creamy. She passed it around the room. Oh, oh, it is so good, said Leslie. I think it tastes, eh, I think it tastes terrible, said, said, Cafferty. I don't understand it, said Mauricia. I don't taste a thing. Mrs. Drew slapped herself in the face. Oh, I've made a big mistake, Mauricia. Of course you can't say anything. It's Mauricia flavored ice cream. It's the same taste you always taste when you're not tasting. So the next day, Mrs. Jules brought in brought in Joe favorite flavored ice cream. Joe Marisha liked it. So did everybody else. Joe thought it had no taste. Everybody liked Marisha. Marisha only liked Joe. This is... <laughs> That's them. Okay, I... Joe and Mauricia sitting in a tree. K I S S I. I take that back. G I G N I S S I K. I I don't mean it. I don't mean it. The following day. The following day, Mrs. Jules brought in Ron. Flavored ice cream. Ron thought it had no taste, but everybody loved it. Everybody liked Mauricia. Mauricia only liked Joe and Ron. Hmm. I'm just joking. By the end of the month, Mrs. Jules had brought in 27 new flavors of ice cream, one for each member of the class. Everybody liked Mauricia, and Mauricia liked everybody. They they all tasted so good, all except Cassidy. That is, Cassidy flavored ice cream tastes tastes like tasted. That is Cassidy. That is Cassidy flavored ice cream tasted a little bit like old ball. Bog not.
Oh. Everybody still agreed with mm. Mauricio. Every, everyone still agreed that Mauricio flavored ice cream was the best, except Mauricio. She liked Todd ice cream the best. This this turned out to be a problem. Every once in a while, Mauricia would try to take a bite out of Todd's arm in order to get that very special fit flavor. Chapter 10, Paul. Paul had the best seat in Mrs. Zhu's class. He sat in the back of the room. He No, actually. He sat in the back of the room. It was the seat that was the farthest away from Mrs. Jules. Mrs. Jules was teaching the class about fractions. She knew she draw a picture of a pie on the blackboard. She cut the pie into eight, eight pieces. She explained that each piece was was one eighth of the pie. Paul never paid attention. He didn't see the picture of the pie. He didn't see anything. Well, he did see one thing. It, actually, he saw two things. He saw Leslie two pigtails. Leslie sat in front of Paul. She had two long brown pigtails that reached all the way down to the, her waist. Paul saw those pigtails in a terrible and a terrible urge came over him. He wanted to pull a pigtail. He wanted to wrap his fist around it, feel, feel the hair between his fingers, and just yank. Now that's what I feel about my sister. He thought it would also be fun to tie the pigtails together, or better yet, tie them in her chair. But most of all, he just wanted to pull one. Slowly, he reached for the one on the right. No, what am I doing? He thought. I'm, I'm only, I'll only get into trouble. Paul had to made. Paul had it made. He sat in the back of the room. He paid no attention to anyone, and nobody paid attention to him. But if he pulled. A pig deal, it will be all over. Leslie would tell on him, and he become the center of attention. Oh, I forgot to show you guys. Oh, also, I forgot to show you guys the picture. feel weird. and slowly withdrew his arm, but Paul couldn't ignore those pigtails. They were dangling right in front of him, just begging to be pulled. He could close his eyes, but he couldn't make the pigtails disappear. He could still smell them and hear them. He could almost taste them. Dad. 
that down. Maybe just a little tug? He thought, no, 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 none. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. What is happening? Kidding. They, they were hung easily within his reach. Well, let them just hang there, thought Paul. It would be foolish to pull one, no matter how tempting that they were. None of the other children in the class pulled the pigtails. Why should he? Of course, none of the other children sat behind Leslie either. It was just a simple matter of being able to think clearly. That was all. Paul thought it. Paul thought it over and decided not to pull one. It was as simple as that. Suddenly, his arm shot forward. He grabbed Leslie's right pigtail and yanked. Yeah! Screamed Leslie. Everybody looked at her. Paul pulled my pigtail. My pigtail. She said. They all looked at Paul. I, I couldn't help it, said Paul. You'd better learn to help it, said Mrs. Jules. She wrote Paul's name on the blackboard under the word discipline. Tell Leslie you're sorry. I'm sorry, Leslie, said Paul. Hmm. So Leslie, Paul just, Paul felt horrible. Never again would he pull another pigtail, except there was only one problem. He still wasn't satisfied. He had pulled the right one, but he wasn't enough. He wanted to pull the left one, too. It was, it was as if he heard a little voice coming from the pigtail saying, Pull me, Paul, pull me. I can't, Paul answered. My name's already on the blackboard under the word discipline. Big deal, said said the pigtail. Pull me. No way, said Paul. Never again. Oh, come on, Paul, just a little tug, urged the pigtail. What harm could you could it do? Lots of harm, said Paul. Leslie will scream and I'll get in trouble again. Boy, that's not fair, whined the pigtail. You pulled the right one. Now it's my turn. I know, but I can't, said Paul. Sure you can, said the pigtail. Just grab me and yank. No, said Paul. It's not right. Sure it is, Paul, said the pigtail. Pigtails are meant to be pulled. That's what they that's what we're here for. Tell that to Leslie, said Paul. Leslie won't mind, said the pigtails. I promise. I bet, said the said Paul. Just like she didn't mind the last time. She didn't you just didn't pull hard enough, said the pigtail. Leslie likes us pulled really hard. Really? asked Paul. Cross my heart, said the said the pigtail. The harder, the better. Okay, said Paul. But if you're lying, I promise, said the pigtail. Paul grabbed the left pigtail. It felt good in his hand. He pulled as hard as he can. Yeah! <laughs> Scream, Leslie. Leslie. Mrs. Jules asked, Paul, did you pull Leslie's pigtail again? No, said Paul. I pulled the other one. All the children laughed. Are you trying to be funny? Asked Mrs. Jules. No, said Paul. I was trying to be fair. I couldn't pull one and not... I couldn't pull one and not the other. The children laughed again. Pigtails are meant to be pulled, Paul concluded. Mrs. Jules put a check next to Paul's name on the blackboard under the word discipline. But at least... But at last, Paul was satisfied. True, his name was on the blackboard and a check next to it, but that really didn't matter. All he had to do was stay out of trouble for the rest of the day. The rest of the day. And his name would be erased. It's easy to stay out of trouble when you have the best seat in the class. In fact, Paul could do this every day. He could put Paul Leslie's pigtail twice and then say, stay out of trouble the rest of the day. There was nothing Leslie could do about it. Suddenly, out of nowhere, Leslie screamed, Yeah! 
This is your circle of Paul's name sent him early on the kindergarten bus. Nobody would believe that he hadn't pulled Leslie's pigtail again. I know why. Because she just wanted to get him in, get him in trouble. Okay, guys. So that's it for today. I hope you watch the next video and the last video. Subscribe on my channel. Click the like button. Click the link. Comment down below if I should read other books. And also, I will see you on next time video. And don't forget to comment. Also, comment down below if I should do another part, which I am. And I also have these. I got these from Amazon. I got this and this for my aunt's best friend. So whatever after Genie in the pot in the bottle and Stella Bates broken birthday. You can get that on Amazon. Also, I got this from my friend. We say side with story from Lisa School. You can get it on Amazon. Just it's a it's for ki it's for kids, adults, any teenager, whatever. And also, you can also, so you can buy now, add to car or add to list, and then put what your name, if you want a wish list, you can put your name, you click your name, and then it will add to this, and it will add to your list, okay? So, also, don't, I also know that I said this, click the like button, click the bell, click the link, click the like button, click the bell, subscribe on my channel, click the link, and I will see you on the next time video. Bye!